you're listening to Shop Talk with your host, Kevin Tates. Brought to you by Eastwood Tools. Everything you need to do the job right. Hey, you're listening to Shop Talk, brought to you by the Eastwood Company. I'm your host, Kevin Tates, and we're bringing you a series of interviews of really interesting people that we met on the floor of the 2013 SEMA show. Now, we've all heard the saying, a woman in a man's world. Well, we met somebody that is a woman in a car person's world, Joanne Bortles, who has been doing what you and I love to do as gearheads for a long, long time and taking it to the next level, doing high-end custom work, airbrush work, as well as feeling like it's very important to pass on her skills and mentor in the form of authoring books, doing how-to videos, and participating in various forms of other media in promoting what we know and love in the car hobby. Now, I'm a big fan of the saying and of the philosophy, do the work. And Joanne Bortles, well, she does the work. So listen up. It's a pretty interesting conversation with Joanne. You're listening to Shop Talk. We're on the floor of SEMA 2013, and we are talking with amazing celebrities. Everybody is here. This is the best work in the world. It's just an awesome thing. The hair is standing up on my arms. And we've got a good friend of mine here, Joanne Bortles, custom painter extraordinaire. And as I find out now, she's a great body man. Per- forgive me for saying body man, but we you know, I'll say car guys and everything. Joanne, how are you? I am having the best SEMA ever. There's just the, the, the energy on the, fl- on the SEMA show floor here is just... It's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. It's contagious, isn't it? Oh, it is. It's it's just there's just this, I don't know this 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 buzz. Everybody just seems to be so energized this year. Mm-hmm. Now I know you. Some of our listeners may not have heard of you, but they will soon enough, whether we do this interview or not, because you are coming up. You are on a rocket ride, and congratulations for all of the uh, the ink, the books, the the TV stuff, all the stuff that you're doing. Uh, well done. You're doing a great job of all of it. But give us all a little bit of a background on you. I know I've got one of your books. Uh, tell us what you've got going on. Well, um, as far as like background, I've been doing uh, custom paint and fabrication for my gosh. Since 1979, I actually started welding on cars when I was 16 years old in 1976, wow. and it's just been it's just been a crazy ride over the years. And I've mostly concentrated on painting over the last 20 years, but this year I decided that um, we decided to restore a 1967 Firebird, mm-hmm. and my fabrication and mechanical skills started you know i had i had a knock 20 years worth of rust off these skills and believe me <laughs> that was just uh, that was that was a trick in itself well it's fun to always uh challenge ourselves isn't it this the firebird was quite the challenge the firebird was actually that we did this year it was actually sitting in a field for about i don't know probably at least 10 years yeah. just exposed to the elements yeah and a unibody car well you know they didn't do anything for internal corrosion protection on these old cars the 60s cars they they had uh, galvanized coating on the rockers and that's about it isn't it it was a um it was only early on in 67 that they did do do the galvanize on the rockers and the rear frame rails and about halfway through they just they just went to regular old carbon steel yeah Wow, wow. Well, tell me about you. You've got an active shop, you have clients, you have customer work, or do you just go all over over the place, all over the place and be a rock star? Well, no. (laughs) You're so funny. We do, we do, we do a little of both. We primarily work out of our shop in Waxhaw, North Carolina, but we also do a lot of traveling. We have clients that'll fly us in. Sometimes if it's close enough, we'll just load up the truck. Yeah. And we'll just go, like, on the way home from SEMA show, we're actually going to be stopping in Artesia, New Mexico, and I'm going to be doing my real fire on a new Ford Raptor. Wow. Now, that's a huge canvas. I've driven one of those trucks. They're fun to drive, but what a tank, man. That's, <laughs> you're just going to be a lot of fire on that sucker. Oh, we're just, we're just doing the front end. We're not going on to the bed, so hopefully it won't be too rough. Yeah. I want to switch gears here. I want to talk about Waterborne. Now, you came to the Powerblock Studios, and you worked with a muscle car crew, and you guys did this awesome paint job with water, right? Yes. How do you find working with water as opposed to working with solvent? You know, there are some times where waterborne is superior, so superior to using solvents. And the, the collision industry is finding this out. When it comes yes. to collision, you just can't beat water. Mm-hmm. And also, keep in mind that, you know, what happens in California eventually spreads across the country. Yes. And who knows where we'll be five, ten years from now, 
So it's like the sooner people start getting used to painting with water, they'll be ready yeah. when and if the rules do change. Well, and the rules do change, and Europe typically leads the way, and the European technologies eventually come over here, and that's happening now. I was at a get-together the other night, on Monday night here, and people were talking about waterborne clear being a mainstay in collision repair in Europe. It's headed our way. Wow. So it's up to us to, to attack that learning curve. Brings me to my next question. Eastwood is all about empowering the, the beginners and the DIY guys. And my company, Paint Education, it's the same thing. That's my mission statement. Let's pass this information along. Let's make people uh, aware of technologies that they can learn easily and create successes so they live to paint another day, so they can be inspired and keep going in this hobby. I know this is important to you with the books. Um, how important is it to you to share your knowledge with other people? For me, I, I've been doing this, like I said, you know, over 30 years. And it, there are so many amazing painters who came before me and who've passed on their information to me, people who are not around anymore. And their, their techniques, their life's work lives through what I can pass on to others. Yeah. And I've been actually working with Source Interlink publications like uh, Carcraft and um, High Performance Pontiac mm -hmm. and a number of other ones. And doing how-to tech articles. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and how-to tech is great because there's been a bunch of stuff about print going away. Print is never going to go away. People, in my opinion, people love the tactile sensation of reading a magazine and it stays around forever. One of the coolest things that I have is a stack of my dad's old car magazines, Hot Rods, Custom Rodder, all these books, and I go back to them. I've got them covered in plastic. It's my shrine now, and I love those old magazines. So for me, print is, is an amazing expression, and I also write freelance tech for some of the source books. Um, but it also it allows us to give something back, to create a lesson for somebody that stays around forever, right? Well, that's absolutely true, but you know, you can't ignore the new technology. No. And a, so many people, YouTube has become such a huge resource Resource. That's why after SEMA show, I, I mean, I've been doing a whole bunch of video. And over the winter, I am going to be posting a lot of how to's, not just on paint, but also on fabrication and building on my YouTube channel. That's great. That is great. Uh, YouTube is. It's, you know, I've always said you can find as much bad stuff as you want to look for on the internet. It's a vehicle for that. But the potential for education, uh, entertainment aside, we all know we can have fun watching the silly video of a guy crashing his bicycle. But the power of YouTube, the power of the internet for you and I to transfer and to pass on the information is fantastic. And it's free for the end user. That's the best thing, isn't it? It absolutely is. I mean, when we were, when we were doing the Firebird, we were actually going on YouTube looking for content and I mean there was a great selection of videos yeah. the videos that had great video quality they were skipping a lot of steps yep. you know like okay we're gonna install the tail light panel and it's mm -hmm. like okay here's a tail light panel installed yep. it's like where's all the stuff in between yep. and then there was stuff that was some great content mm -hmm. but very poor video quality yeah and so my videos that I'm gonna be posting on my YouTube channel yeah hopefully they're going to be of use to everyone who's out there who yeah. wants to know, okay, how do I do this paint job? How do I do this airbrushing? But also, how do I restore this F-Body GM? Yeah, absolutely. And just like this podcast, and by the way, you're listening to Shop Talk. I'm your host, Kevin Tates. We've got Joanne Bortles here from the Florist SEMA. This is just so cool, man. It's Thank so you for exciting. taking your time to do this. But this podcast is available for free on the Eastwood blog, uh, iTunes download, and uh, if you want, I'm sure we can talk to the guys about being able to house it on your website uh, for you Absolutely. to promote. So let's get the message out there, man. Let's do it. Let's, and Eastwood is very proactive with a lot of the things. One of the things that I'm excited about doing with them are the live stream workshops that we're doing. We're using live streaming. It's an hour-long workshop and people can chat in and ask questions while I'm doing a demo. So what do you say we do one together sometime? I'm, I'm up for that. We need to make it happen. Cool. That sounds good. Let's switch gears again. Tell me about... Oh, I've got a bunch of questions. Tell me about the book. The new one? Yes. Oh my well, gosh. How many the do you new, have? I have seven books that have been published over the last ten years. I mean six. I'm sorry. Six books six. over that. Um, but actually, you know, technology, as we had said, it's constantly evolving and changing. Yeah. And so some of the books we have stopped, Motor Books is my publisher, they've stopped printing them because this new book, Automotive Paint from uh, Prep to Final Coat, has got a whole bunch of new information in it. So it makes no sense to keep reprinting. Because technology changes. Yes. yes. 
So this this new book, and it will be available on Motor Books uh, mm-hmm. next summer, I believe it's going to be the published the release date. It's basically going to show like you know how to go from uh, you know when you start with a car, you've got this rusty car, you're fixing your car that you have, just about any kind of painting or fabrication situation that you have, this book is going to address that. And there's going to be a very strong emphasis on waterborne. Yeah. And the first part of the book is going to be nuts and bolts, you know, bare metal to your, you know, regular color coat. And it also have some fabrication in there. The second half of the book is going to be all custom paint and artwork. Mm -hmm. So it's going to address a lot of concerns with one book. Fantastic. How do our listeners get a hold of that book? They can go on my website, www.crazyhorsepainting.com, or they can go on Motorbook's website, and the book will also... Actually, the book is available right now on Amazon.com. You can pre-order the book on Amazon. Great. Just uh, type in Joanne Bortles to the Amazon search. Yeah. Very cool. So let's let's switch gears now to SEMA 2013. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and by the way, I've seen the Firebird and the real fire flames down the side. Great job, Joanne. It looks fantastic. And uh, congratulations. But I know, just from preparing my car for a SEMA debut last year, my little Mustang, um, what a stressful thing to, to have to go through. And I know you guys were working 15, 16-hour days. Tell me about that journey. Oh, my gosh. You know... People see stuff on TV where they'll build a car like in like, you know, a weekend or something yeah, like that. Yeah. It's it's not like that at all. I mean, three and a half months ago, this was a rusting hulk in the field. Three and a half months. Three and a half months. And I mean, we replaced the floor, the trunk, both quarter panels, taillight panel, the roof, yeah. outer wheelhouses, doors, fenders, mm-hmm. hood, trunk lid. We put a tack in. We put the classic first generation tack in the hood we've got the firebird spoiler across the back of there i yeah. mean it the custom color we have on the car this black purple yeah. i mean it's you know some people come to vegas to gamble with their money yeah i came to vegas i gambled with three and a half months of my life yeah. and a 67 firebird and man i rolled that seven i'm thrilled <laughs> that's awesome Oh my gosh, that's a perfect way to put it too. We've gambled with our time. And in a sense we do because, you know, for you guys listening, we come to SEMA. I've been coming to SEMA and I'm proud to be a SEMA member, but I've been coming here ever since 2002 and I've never made money at this show. It's not what it's about. It's about telling the world where you are and and hopefully people recognize who you are. And what you've done with that car is, you know, he's showing me that, that you're the real deal. And, and it's very well done, so congratulations. Well, the, the whole thing about it is like, you know, you're, you know, you're working on a car, you've got a vision, and you don't know yeah. until you've got that paint is finished, you've got those wheels bolted on, and you yeah. roll it out. I mean, that, that car might look great from two feet away yeah. when you're in your shop. You roll it out and you step back about 20 feet, and that's when you realize if you hit that nail on the head, yeah. if you met your expectations, and we were not... 100% sure of it the whole time. We weren't sure mm-hmm. until probably two days before we rolled the car on the trailer to come here. Yep. And it was like, yes, we did it. Yeah, yeah. And you did. And you did it well. Working with new panels. Now, the industry was rocked when a company like Dynacorn came out and said, hey, we're going to reproduce a brand new Mustang. We're going to reproduce a brand new Bronco. We're going to reproduce a brand new Tri-5 Chevy. And there was people squawking and freaking. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic because the uh, it's, it's not going to pollute the restoration market. It's not going to devalue the original valuable cars. What it's going to do, and it, what it is doing, in my opinion, is giving more tools, giving the ability to keep these icons around in the form of a functional vehicle. So you worked exclusively with Dynacorn on this, with yes. Dynacorn panels. And I want to say out loud, I've had my challenges with aftermarket panels. I've had my challenges with OE panels. Um, people think that this new aftermarket stuff doesn't fit. Sometimes you got to make it fit. What was your experience? Not to put you on the spot, but let's tell the truth here. What was your experience with some of these panels? Well, the thing people have to remember is the dies that, I mean, these cars were not perfect from the factory, especially no, no. the first generation. Yeah. They were, and 67 was such a probably a challenging year when they came out with these cars. You can see this. If you ever see a 67 Firebird and you look closely at the the gaps, you know, you look around that front windshield where the fenders line up against that chrome windshield trim. There's so many different things that you don't think about, you know, 
and it's like you, you, you get this tunnel vision when you're working on these projects. You think everything has got to be perfect, mm -hmm. and it's like you freak out, like, why isn't this lining up exactly the way it needs to be lining up? And you don't realize that it wasn't like that from the factory. Yeah, yeah. And these companies are working with these dyes that are, you know, over 40 years old. They yeah. stamped out thousands of parts. Right. And the dyes wear out, don't yeah, they? Yeah, absolutely. It's tons of pressure pressing this metal to shape these panels, and they wear out. And even the new ones that are made, they're made formed from worn out dyes. So, so you know, not to blame the panel, but... You know, it, it's just a bit of a challenge. But, you know, you as a body tech, you can work those problems out. Oh, like the, the quarter panels were absolutely amazing. Mm. There was very little body work. They fit like a dream. Yeah, nice. The quarter panels were great. But also, you also have to remember, is it the, is it the panel or is it the car? Our Firebird had been hit in the back. Mm -hmm. It had also been totaled. The car had had a new front subframe put on it about, right. about 20 years ago. Yeah. So, and also, so you got to think about time. The, gravity is the enemy of these cars. So, these bodies have been sagging yeah. over time. There are so many different issues yeah. to think of. So, when you put a panel on the car and it doesn't exactly line up, mm -hmm. is it the panel yeah. or is it the car? Yeah. It's usually a combination of both. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I can tell you this: the quarter panels, they fit like a dream. Every I, very yeah. little body work. That floor pan mm -hmm. slipped right in there. Yeah. Like that that one piece floor pan. I was really what nervous. What a great idea that was. Yeah. I was so because I had never done a, a one piece floor pan. I'm yeah. thinking, I'm removing the main support structure yeah. of this car. Yeah. But with and the great thing was working with Carcraft magazine, doing the tech yeah. for this article and being able to pass this on to yeah. say, you know, if you, you know, you brace the car correctly, mm -hmm. you can replace this floor pan and have a beautiful one piece floor in there and it's actually yeah. less work it is a than lot having less work. to it do the two about piece. 20 hours worth of welding and then you got to finish the welds i put a full floor on my little mustang yeah. when i restored it a long time and ago. then you've got this beautiful brand new yeah. tunnel in there yeah here's another thing that people forget as the years go by the standards go up the level of cars on this floor and you will agree with me the level of cars at sema at any given car show the level of craftsmanship is fan Fantastic, and it's a wonderful thing. But I remember, I'll never forget, I was down at, um, it was in uh, National Parts Depot, their, their headquarters down in Ocala. They had a survivor there. They had a like a 2,000 mile Mustang GT sitting in the showroom. And it was a survivor car, and I saw it through the window. Man, I gotta go look at that. When I looked at the fit and finish of that car, the quality of paint, and, and just the details we're talking about, there was trash in the paint. It was a light metallic color. There was little sags under the quarter panels. And, and the door gaps weren't perfect. The hood was sitting crooked. The deck lid didn't really fit that well. This car was untouched from the factory in 1965. So people forget, and we have this nostalgic memory, don't we? Yep. And we, we look at these cars in our minds and we go, oh, that Tri-5 Chevy was awesome. Or that old Firebird that the guy had in high school, he did the burnout on the school bridge. That thing was slick black. People forget that, that those cars really weren't that well uh, put together in the first place. Well, another thing is that the materials they use for the replacement metal is far superior than the yes. metal the cars were. It's yes. like this elast elastic, elastomeric, what is it? Elastomeric uh, metal? Well, yeah, yeah. That actually has some flex and give, mm -hmm. so it tends not to, like, you know, crack and break yeah. over time. On top of that, the e-coats that they're putting on the insides of the panels. For instance, you can get a whole rear axle arch section with a trunk floor. I know you can for Mustang, because I looked at that with my car. Everything internally is e-coated. E-coat meaning, for you guys listening, electro deposition primer. It's an electrostatically applied primer that permeates into the pores of the metal. Backsides of the door panels in 67, they weren't coated. Now they are. So that's never going to corrode again, So uh, unless we expose metal. So that's a wonderful thing about these new panels, isn't it? It, it really is, and everything that we had did have E-coat on it. And you yeah. can weld right through it. You don't even got to grind it off. Yeah, and what people don't realize, what I learned in collision repair, is that E-coat has a porosity to it, and you can epoxy right over top of it without prep, with it, without it being cleaned. I went through uh, training classes with Axo Noble with this. Wow, I didn't know that. You I clean I, it, you don't scuff it. Wow. Yeah. I wish I'd known that. It would have saved me so much time. I know. Well, you know, of course, it depends on the paint system, and guys at home read your piece sheets, but but it uh, it was, you know, Axo is a company that's formulated for production shops. you got to cycle them through, and you got one shot at getting it right. Right, so you have to have a 100% ratio of doing the work correctly with no comebacks. That's the collision repair world. It's the restoration world, too, because our reputations hang on that. But it's nice to know that modern technology is translating into these cars. So, 
It's, it's just cool stuff. Well, another another kind of significant thing about our Firebird is that we just did it. It was just, we have a small shop. We don't have a lift. We don't have a rotisserie. We did everything with jack stands, floor jacks, low tech. But we did have a very nice plasma cutter and mm -hmm. a very nice welder. Yeah. So it's like you know you concentrate on those few tools. I mean, you don't need to have a big fancy shop and thousands and thousands of dollars to get professional yeah. results. I've always said that hot rodding and successful hot rodding is nothing more than problem solving. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. From from the ground up to the top coats and your final buffing. Well, so. one, of, one of the biggest things like that, that'll challenge any DYIer at home that's trying to restore their muscle car, mm -hmm. and the number one thing that's going to discourage them is you're going to come to that thing that vexes you, you know, okay, this, there's like this lump on this seam, what am yeah. I going to do to it, you know, it's, you don't, you don't get discouraged, you have yeah. to realize that this happens, this happens to me, yeah. this happens to you, it happens to all of us so-called professionals, Yeah. you know, oh, yeah. and we have to figure it out just like the DYI are at home. Yep, yeah, absolutely. But it's like the end result, once you get through all those challenges, the end result, it's like... It's the best feeling there is. It absolutely is. Well, Joanna, is there anybody you wanted to thank? Any shout-outs you wanted to give? Sponsors, people that have helped, mentors? Well, the first person I want to thank is my boyfriend, David Malkin. <laughs> yes, David's a great guy. For being guy, there the and for working alongside me, helping me fit that sheet metal. And, oh, my gosh, yeah. I wouldn't know what I would have done without him. And then the ladies of the SEMA Business Women's Network. We had some of the ladies come out and work on the car, and they were just amazing. Yeah. And of course, some of the sponsors on the pro on the project. We had Hotchkiss, we had PPG, we had um, of course Dynacorn, mm -hmm. Coker Tire, Rocket Booster Wheels, yeah. Hypertherm. I mean, yeah. the list goes on and on. Yeah, we can't do it without support, can we? No. And whether it comes from at home, uh, my wife's at home, and I miss her terribly, but she understands how much it means and how important it is to be out here. So family, friends, sponsors, uh, we, we can't do it without them. Well, I can honestly say, if it hadn't been for our sponsors and for the automotive community stepping up and helping with either product or actual coming out and working on the car with us, there's no way this car would be here at SEMA. Yeah. And their support, I mean, yes, I love having the car, but knowing the support of the automotive aftermarket community behind me, mm -hmm. that means more to me than anything else. That's very cool. Well said. Joanne, I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule and talking to us here on Chop Talk. And, and um, thank you for being what you are. You're the real deal. You're a genuine person. You're accessible. You're nice. And on top of that, the bonus is you're a crackerjack, man. You're a great <laughs> painter. I'm in awe. And, and I'm proud to know you. So thank you. Well, thank you, Kevin. You're listening to Shop Talk, brought to you by the Eastwood Company. Do the job right with Eastwood. It is so cool to talk to somebody that is that passionate about what they do. So we want to thank Joanne for taking the time at the incredibly busy SEMA show to talk to us and share her views and philosophies as well as what's going on with her with you guys. I want to thank you guys for listening to Shop Talk. And as usual, tell us what you think. Send us an email. Let us know what you want to hear, who you want us to talk to, or what kind of subjects you want to have a discussion on or find out more information on. I want to thank the Eastwood Company for making all of this possible. I'm your host, Kevin Tates. Thanks for listening. We'll see you down the road. In the meantime, check out everything at the Eastwood.com website. Eastwood has what it takes to do the job right. And you know me, I like to do the job right. Thanks for listening to Shop Talk. I'm Kevin Tates. Thanks for listening to Shop Talk. There is much more to come. I'm your host, Kevin Tates. We are from the floor of SEMA. Remember, do the job right with Eastwood.